Hello, my name is Jerry Wise, and I am a therapist at Family Tree Counseling Associates in Carmel, Indiana, just on the north side of Indianapolis. And this is a video entitled, ACOA Self-Care, Slowing Down the Process. This video is about those of us who have suffered with feeling pressured and hurried in conversation and in the emotional communication process in our marriages, with our family of origin, uh, bosses, uh, virtually anyone that we have uh, come in contact with. The reason why this is such a problem, I believe, and I want to raise this problem, I don't think you're going to see a lot of videos on this topic, uh, unfortunately. But I think it's an important topic. For those of us who grew up in dysfunctional families, for adult children of alcoholics, the difficulties that they had in learning how to process their internal feelings, their thoughts, and be able to communicate that within a conversation and within the communication process within their marriage, it can be very difficult. And oftentimes it goes by way too quickly, way too fast. We feel overwhelmed and then we can't communicate, don't communicate, and have all kinds of problems as a result. So self-care involves slowing down that process. And you have a right to slow it down. And I wanted to reinforce and affirm that right that you have. And I, I think one of the ways in which we find ourselves when we are in a process in which things are going by too quickly is when we feel overwhelmed, when we're overreacting. Um, and this can be somebody we really, with someone we really care about. It can even be with folks that we don't care so much about. It could be a doctor or pastor or someone in our lives that we need to communicate with. And maybe they don't have a very healthy communication model or don't know themselves or internal feelings and thoughts very well and so they will get reactive or hurried or everything becomes pressured then we become pressured and then we're set up for failure for explos for explosions for denying our own sense of self and our own self-awareness and I think it causes lots of problems for many of us and I think I remember learning that skill of slowing down the process was a very important skill to learning self-care. And again, in a nutshell, the process of self-care is I only have to process as quickly as I can process. I do not have to process or to deal with my own thoughts and feelings or deal with the conversation at your rate or at someone else's pace. I neither have to mirror the energy nor mirror the speed when I'm talking with someone. And in fact, now I will purposely slow down the process so that I can catch up with myself. And I think that provides a tremendous amount of self-care for me. Because before, I always would feel pressured and get hurried, not know how I feel, not know how I think, get reactive, and that would cause problems. And it would either reinforce codependency or reinforce counterdependency or reinforce reactivity and cause all kinds of problems within relationships. This video is for those who have struggled with being overwhelmed in relationships or in a conversation with other people who are intense and pushy and whose conversations in which they may even feel bullied. That can be our spouse. That can, Many times spouses will bully us. Um, friends will bully us. Family members will bully us. In other words, they pressure the conversation. Either they want you to comply or, or they want you to think the way they think and feel the way they feel. But you maybe haven't even had a chance to know how you feel or how you think about something. And we have felt pressured to have to um, respond at the pace, at the rate, and at the intensity and mirror what they're doing because we feel that's what we should do 
or we have learned that for those who are ACOAs have learned that requirement growing up in an alcoholic or addicted home. You cannot stop and think about your feelings or thoughts. In fact, the three rules for the alcoholic home or addicted home is don't think, don't feel, uh, and don't talk. Well, that makes for a real problematic uh, learning, uh, learned process of communication. And how do you think that would affect our marriages? How we communicate with our kids? How we, if our model is don't think, don't feel, don't talk. So what I'm suggesting is slow the process down so you can catch up with yourself and be able to engage another person, no matter how healthy or unhealthy they are, in a healthy conversation for you. ACOAs grew up in an alcoholic or addicted home in which the communication was inconsistent, unclear, confusing. It would get intense to almost non-existent. There would be anger or it would be manipulative. We might find those same patterns in our own marriages in our own family of origin as we try to relate to them as adults? And how would this leave us as adults in adult relationships? Feeling overwhelmed, unsure, pressured, and unheard. I believe that those of us who grew up in families with poor relationship models, low self-differentiation, with imprinting that was not very healthy, shame, abandonment, low self-esteem, not learning self-care or what's normal or what rights we might have in communication, all of this cripples our communication process and our skills and how we relate to other people. And this describes the problem. Often we hook up with people and are attracted to spouses in which our relationship soup becomes a mess. And our communication soup is a mess as well. And we are often not aware of our feelings. We will easily feel threatened. We may feel immature. We let others overwhelm us. We allow the process of interaction, which is way, way too fast, arguments, Communication is often experienced way too fast to process and to be heard and to hear others. Just simply slowing it down can help improve communication and help with self-care in valuing me. And this speed that we've come to accept as the speed that we must hold is there and it sabotages healthy, happy relationships and of course, we learned this sabotaging from our family of origin growing up. Often, as ACOA, ACOAs, we are not aware of wants, beliefs, and needs. We have very poor boundaries. We sing, swing from being people-pleasing pacifiers to quiet anger or aggressive dominators. So what do we do? Recovery is a slower process, and it takes a while to heal from our past. It may take years to heal as an ACOA. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, and in fact, it doesn't mean all is lost. I think what we can find is if we will choose and begin to work on slowing down the process, it tends to relax us more, calm and disarm others more, and it also begins to build self-esteem, self-differentiation that, hey, I don't have to communicate the way you think I have to communicate and the pace in which you think I ought to communicate and to come up with answers in the speed in which you think I need to come up with them. Maybe I need to process this and I have to demand and put up boundaries that I get that processing time because that is my right as a human being. I can't think faster than I can think. I can't feel or become aware of feelings faster than I can become aware of them. And I can't process and express those thoughts and feelings uh, only as fast as I can. 
and often the communication problem problems in dysfunctional marriages for example ends up being a speed that's going 60 mile an hour in the marriage but the couple can only actually healthily communicate at about 30 miles an hour but their communication is at 60 and you can understand how that would cause considerable problems in the relationship real change can begin when you can slow the process down to match your ability to feel and to think. Often this is out of sync, and I kind of called this hurried communication. And how many times have you experienced this overwhelmed state in which we feel confused and pressured and unheard? If we are slow at identifying and expressing feelings and thoughts, if we are not sure what we believe or how we think about an issue, if we are not sure um, what we want to communicate, or if we feel intimidated or overwhelmed, we must choose and learn to stop and process before we proceed. If we don't, this will create many difficulties for ourselves and for the communication process. I actually think when we don't stop and process, then we do a little self-abandonment. We leave ourselves in the dirt and, and abandon ourselves and what we really need. And I think many abandonment issues come from self-abandonment, which we have learned growing up. Here are some tools for ACOAs to use for slowing down the communication process. Often, we try to change while accepting the speed of communication and relationship interaction, and this creates a lot of frustration and mostly failure. If we do not slow the process down, uh, we respond poorly out of our own weakness and often out of our own res unresolved issues. ACOAs grow up in a fast-paced, unhealthy communication pattern with their family of origin. Uh, oftentimes you didn't know what was coming next. You didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, what is dad going to be like? Uh, what dad, what mom am I going to get now? And what kind of communication or what's expected of me in communicating? And often it, there wasn't a matched communication. In fact, where you were in the process, it didn't matter. You just need to respond and do and think the way I'm demanding of you. And so that became very common. And so we do that today and feel hurried, pressured, and uncomfortable in communicating with others, oftentimes with spouses. ACOAs grow up in an environment in which there may be yelling, intense anxiety, and pressure, and we're required to communicate and talk in this environment. We carry this over to our adult relationships and re-feel it when we communicate with spouses, bosses, friends, pastors, policemen, parents, and even with therapists. We become overwhelmed, emotionally flooded, and then just try to survive. But often we do not communicate our feelings, our wants, or our needs. We just focus on getting the pressure to stop or the overwhelmed feelings to stop. We grew up and have come to learn we must accept the pace, the reasoning, the demands, and the expectations of others when communicating. ACOAs have grown up believing that's what's norm. If someone expects me to know right now, I should know. And what's wrong with me if I don't know? If somebody says, well, what do you think about that? If I don't know, then there's something wrong with me. And why don't you know right now? Because I don't know. I haven't had a chance to think about it. I may need to process it. But for ACOAs, they've got to know right now. The demand is there. They must know it, do it, feel it. And then that becomes a real problem. This is what to think about normal rules for communication. I recommend for ACOAs and adult children of dys dysfunctional families for slowing down the process, uh, the process of, and in fact, these are also the rules that I have adopted for my own recovery as a codependent, 
and first of all kind of a communication bill of rights and this would be for any relationship I never have to respond right now unless the house is on fire unless there's blood I do not have to respond right now often there is never a serious urgency no matter what it is I do not have to answer any or all questions I am asked I can answer the questions I want to answer and the way I want to answer them. Three, I also have the right to know the context or the reason for the question before I answer. That's boundaries. That's knowing where I stop and you begin. I can ask to wait before I respond to you. I can say, hold on, I hear what you're saying. I need to process that. I need to think about it. I will get back to you. I, I need to wait. I, I'm not sure how I feel. I'm not sure what I think. So I, I'll have to, we'll have to talk about this again. I don't know. And I have a right to say, I don't know. I never have to accept your premises, your assumptions, or conclusions. That's not, I do not have to accept those. I get to have my own. Seven, I have the right to my own premises, thoughts, conclusions, and feelings. Eight, I have the right to slow things down to accommodate my own mental and emotional process. However slow it is, I may be the slowest person in history. That doesn't matter. I have a right to slow it down to a pace that I can deal with it. A good response for slowing things down can be begin with, I understand what you have said or what you're asking. Let me process that or let me think about that. Acknowledge the other person and do self-care for yourself. That's self-processing. Acknowledge the other person and then work on your own self-processing. If I ask to slow things down, I am not being difficult. I'm not being negative or unreasonable. I have a right to process things at my own pace. You do not have a right to demand communication from me. If you think you have that right, we have boundary issues. And of course, many couples who are ACOA and many folks who have grown up as ACOA have boundary issues and also find someone who has boundary issues themselves. Eleven, um, if I am feeling attacked, if I'm feeling reactive, if I'm feeling blamed, if I'm feeling uneasy, if I'm feeling afraid or confused, then I use the response that I mentioned above. I acknowledge what you're saying. I need to process what's going on with me, and we'll talk about this. And I have a right to disengage from the communication. If I'm feeling threatened or unafraid or whatever, I have a right to stop. That's what healthy boundaries are. And healthy boundaries mean you accept that from me. If you can't, we've got a problem and we need to go get some help, especially within a couple. If couples cannot accept that from one another, then they need to go talk to a therapist and get some help. Healthy communication and true communication requires feeling safe, heard, valued, respected, and unhurried. I must do, I must do the self-care required to accomplish this for me. I hope this video has been of help to you. Uh, I hope you will join our uh, YouTube channel. Uh, I think we've just passed 100,000 views, which is amazing. I hope you'll join our channel. I hope you'll email me with questions. My email and contact information will be on the screen for you. Uh, if you live in the Midwest or Indianapolis area, I'd be happy to see you in the office. If you don't, then I provide Skype uh, therapy on through the online and have a number of clients all over the country uh, who are benefiting from uh, having someone who understands adult children of alcoholic issues. It's, I think it's difficult to find someone sometimes who understands those issues. And I'd like to uh, 
thank you very much for being patient watching the video today and I hope you have a great day.